Hello, and welcome to this online video webinar for the COM 1101 argumentative speech. This, today we are going to go over reviewing the bill that you have found, how to take a look at it and figure out what your keywords might be for your searches, where to search on the library's website, and go over some other information that can be useful for you um, for this speech. So first, we're going to take a look at the legislative um, bills for this current session. These are the bills in bill number order. And today we are going to be taking a look at House Bill 415. So far, this has not yet been um, signed into law. It is still going through the process, and you can see the where it is um, in, in the process. The last time um, any action was taken was the first part of February, so almost a month ago. To see the full bill, you would click on bill text. This will give you the entire text of the bill, which you need to read through so that you know what the um, what is being either added as a new bill or amended. Um, in this case, this is an amended bill. Anything that is underlined underscored is being added to the current bill. And anything that has a strike through, let's see if we can find one, because I know there are some, is being removed or changed. So here, there, the numbering here is changing because of all of the text that is being added. So once we understand what is being what the bill is is relating to what what kinds of of things are being changed and how that's going to affect um, the pop population of the state. We then go and try to figure out a search strategy and where we're going to primarily do our searching is here in OneSearch, but we also have some preliminary research that we need to do. And we're going to do start over here with the subject guides. The library has created a subject guide specifically for COM 1101. So we would go into the select a guide and hopefully remember our alphabetical order. And here we have COM 1101 workshop. So we select the COM 1101 workshop and we hit go. And this will open um, the, the guide for the workshop. When we are doing um, in-person workshops, this is where you would register for an in-person workshop. This semester, we are only doing um, this video. So here we have our getting started. This is where you would come to get started with your um, with your research. The first thing you, you would probably want to do is do some background um, searching. What is what what does the topic mean? What are the main um, points in in the bill that that might be a explained in um, some encyclopedias, or we have this resource here called CQ Researcher that is um, was specifically purchased as an online resource for COM 1101 for some of the features that it has. CQ Researcher is a, um, it's essentially a magazine that um, publishes approximately once a month or once a week and on a topic of current interest. 
So if we were going to search for anything that might be related to our um, our bill, which is concealed carry of guns in schools, we could just do a very broad search, say on guns. And then we have, it pops up some suggestions. There's a report called Guns on Campus. So we can take a look at this. This is from 2017. 2017 was when a lot of bills were written um, allowing guns on college campuses. The current bill in the Idaho legislature is um, proposing to allow concealed carry of weapons um, in K through 12 schools. But this can give us some information about the, the talking points um, that, were, that were made there at the time in, in 2017. One of the um, primary points of interest um, in the CQ researcher articles is this pro-con section. Um, this is this can give you some ideas of of how to um, create your your the opposite point that you're trying of, of the one that you're trying to make um, by seeing how the people, these are usually experts in related to the topic. You see this, the con is, is the campaign to keep guns off campus. And the person the, who's writing the pro side is a member of an organization called Students for Concealed Carry. So this is the way that, that, this, um, that these articles are are constructed. So you, you might want to, even if you can't find an article um, within CQ Researcher specifically on your topic, take a look at some of the pro-con um, sections in some of the other articles to kind of get an idea of, of how this works. Um, you've also got some um, related articles. So here's one on school safety. Um, from 2019 that might be um, of interest with this, with our particular topic. So you can take a look at that one as well. Um, another um, thing, you know, so there's several different sections. You've got the outlook. There's also um, footnotes and a bibliography. Um, anytime you have an article you want to take a look at the resources that the author of the article used um, and see if they can be useful uh, for your um, for your topic. That way you don't have to do any do the heavy lifting because that has already um, been done for you. So, Let's go back to our research getting started. And so there's there's the CQ researcher. Um, Newsbank is a series of newspapers. You might consider looking at the newspapers, although the articles in Newsbank are also um, included in the results from OneSearch. There's a guide here and some tips for how to um, plan your keyword searching. Sometimes that, that can, just sitting down and thinking about it, reading through the bill, reading through things can give you some ideas. Reading through the background information um, can give you some ideas of the vocabulary that um, is used. Sometimes the words that you're thinking of are not necessarily the words that the experts are using. So doing some background um, reading before you start your in-depth research can be um, very helpful. So we're going to start out um, in OneSearch, and I'm going to do a search for concealed carry. Notice that I'm putting quotation marks around the words. That makes um, tells the database that we want these two words to be together um, as a phrase. It's still going to um, search for them individually or per 
show them for you in the results individually, but the searches are going to have the words together. So we hit search, and then we'll get our search results. One of the um, interesting things about this particular resource is if your um, initial search is broad enough, you will get an encyclopedia article related to your topic. So that is called a research starter. So this is an encyclopedia article from Salem Press Encyclopedia about concealed weapons. And sometimes they can be fairly lengthy and sometimes they're just really short. And so here's a segment section about concealed carry laws, the concealed carry debate, and a bibliography. So this can give you some, some information, um, some background on, on the topic. So we'll go back to our, now we'll notice that the first few um, articles listed here aren't really on our topic. They're talking about uh, concealed weapons at TSA checkpoints, but we're looking for um, concealed care, the idea of concealed carry in schools and by employees. And you do have to spell things correctly. So notice when we added these extra words, our research starter disappeared, but instead of 160 some odd thousand results, we now have a little over 15,000. And the results seem to be fairly relevant to our, to our topic. Some of them may still be talking about um, colleges, um, but you have, um, quite a number of articles about concealed carry and school safety. Notice some of the subject headings have school policy, school safety, school violence, employee attitudes, that some of those may turn out to be um, valuable for you as you work through, um, through your, your research. So we have, how do we access these, these articles? Notice this says full text from Eric. Eric is a separate database, but we can click on the link and it should open up. The article. Actually, in this case, this is a thesis that has been um, it is included in, in the thesis database. So you can look through this. And if you come across something that's really long like this, you don't have to read the whole thing. See if you can find an index. Um, use your find within page, which is control F in just about any um, resource that will help you identify keywords um, that you're looking for. So we have um, this next article. We have HTML full text and PDF full text. If you come across um, an article that has both, you would want to choose uh, PDF full text because that is an easier format to um, use for your research because it has the page numbers. So if you're making a, if you're, if you're quoting something within a very long article, notice this article is 12 pages long um, and you're required to put the page number of the quote, this gives you that information. So always choose PDF over HTML. If all you have is HTML, then that's, that's what you, what you would need to use. So if we take a look further at this article, we're going to click on the title of the of this article. We have the title of the article. 
the authors of the article. This is the journal that the article was published in, which is referred to as the source. This is the information that you need for, for your work cited page. You can come over here on this page where it says cite. And then you can look, go, scroll through down to whichever format you've been asked to use, usually either MLA or APA. Here it is. Let's find it. APA. And these are, this is, is the system's approximation of what your um, citation should look like. You always want to make sure that you check your style manual to make sure that it's correct. Not every, sometimes there's information missing. Sometimes there's information that is incorrect. I have seen um, citations that in the, in the actual article, everything is in all capital letters and there is no citation format that I know of that allows for um, all capital letters in the title of, of the article. Once you've found an article that you like, let's go back into this, you can email this to yourself. When you email an article with a PDF full text link, the PDF will be um, an attachment to your email. And you also want to take a look over here where it says citation format and choose the appropriate format, usually either APA or MLA. And then the citation that we just looked at will be included in, um, in your email. You want to put in your email right here and then hit send and that will be um, in your email, which is an, a really good way to collect, especially if you're doing searching several different at several different times. Um, it helps you um, keep track of, of what you've got. So here we have um, an ebook. This is the same thing. Don't avoid books because they um, they can be very useful. You don't have to read the whole book. Remember that. If we want to say, okay, we only want what's in full text, this may or may not eliminate the ebooks. It will definitely eliminate the books in the library's catalog that are that you would have to come to the library to to check out because yes, they're full text, but it's in a physical book, full text, not a digital full text. If you've been told you need to only use peer reviewed materials, that would eliminate the periodicals and the newspapers and also possibly um, the books. You can check these boxes. We have this date range here. So the earliest article in our results list um, is from 1901. We can move this slider and see what happens to our results list. So 1995, that didn't take out a whole lot of articles. A lot of the really, really old things are kind of false hits. Um, but if you need, if you've been told you only need materials from say the last five years or the last 10 years, this is an easy way um, to, to narrow down your um, your results list, especially if you have a very large um, set of results. You can take a look at your subjects with our fairly small and fairly targeted search. Our subjects are fairly on point. Down here it says show more. So we have the list of all of the subject headings. They're in the hit count, the number of times that the, that this subject heading occurs in our 15,000 um, set of list of results. If you want to, um, like me, if you need them in alphabetical order, you just click on where it says name, and then it sorts 
into alphabetical order. And then these, and you still have the hip count over here, but you have um, an alphabetical list that can be easier to, um, to scroll through and find a, a particular topic that you might be um, thinking of. Is, is, it, is this in the subject subject terms of that I'm looking for? You all you need to do um, is just check the box for the subject term that you want to to add and say update because these are fairly small. Um, you probably don't want to select too many at a, at a single time. So now all of our um, results have our keywords, concealed carry, schools, and employees, and a subject term of National Rifle Association, as we can see right here. If we look at these and say, well, you know, these don't really fit what I'm looking for, you can change that back, just click on the X next to the subject, and then we're back to our original um, set of, of results. You can also <clears throat> uh, select subject headings from, from your results list. So let's say we want to see school policy. If we come up here to where it says advanced search, and we open up these additional search boxes and we put our school policy in our search. And then we can select a field and say we want it to be um, a subject term. And then we search. And so that is another way to um, add subject terms to your, um, to your search. And notice we have 67 results. Um, where we have school policy and with concealed carry schools and employees. If you decide you want to take, um, say, you, you want to take schools out, now that we have school policy as a subject term, you can just come up here and delete this here and do our search again. And you notice that didn't make any difference in our in our search results. If we were to change the subject term here, it might to something that doesn't have the word school in it, um, that, it that might affect the search that we have. With the advanced search also, you notice this list of disciplines down here. This is another way that you can um, make changes to um, your results list, especially if you have um, a very, very large set of, of results that you need to narrow down. Different disciplines, such as you see, you have biology and education, and mathematics and marketing, social sciences, different things like this, they all have sets of subject terms that they use. Um, in the journals that they that are published in those in those particular um, subject areas um, that affect the um, the results. So this is a way that I like to to use to um, narrow down um, my results if I have a very very large set of results, and it also targets the subject headings um, a little bit more um, narrowly so that you get a better set of, of, of subject headings. A lot of times with very broad searches, you'll have subject headings like United States and nonfiction, which don't really help you refine your, your, your topic or your search results in any effective way. So using one of these um, uh, discipline categories 
can can help narrow things down. So let's see, like select law. We can scroll down here to the bottom and hit search. And we had our 67 results are now down to four. So our search results now, you can see this is our, our search terms, concealed carry, employees, and the subject term of school policy. These are these expanders are automatic. You can undo them, and we've limited to the discipline of law. And this may have narrowed down things too far for you. So again, you just click on the X, and that takes us back to our results list. If you decide you don't want the subject school policy. You just come up here and delete it. And then we do our search. Let's see what happens without our word schools. So without our word schools, we have 25,000. So now we just got concealed carry and employees, but it's not focusing on schools. So we would probably want to add um, our term back. So that took out about 10,000 results. So you have to kind of be aware of, of what your search terms are and how um, what the results you're getting are. If you find other words in either in the title or in that you can add any of the words that are in these subjects. So we could add the word weapons just as a keyword. Doesn't have you don't have to choose a one of these areas here. You can just leave it as this, and then it's just adding that as a as a keyword term. Now the keywords, it's not only searching the information that we find here. You've got the title. You have your um, your subject terms and all of this. Your abstract, the abstract can help you decide really quickly without having to open um, the article. But your keyword search is not only searching this information; it's also searching the full text of your article or your ebook. So you may not see the words in your in your search you'll notice that the the words that are in your search are in bold so you can see how these words are showing up okay so let's go back to our research guide we have we're getting started We've gotten started. We've figured out our search terms. So we have the helpful databases. Notice that CQ Researcher and OneSearch are on this list. If your topic is something that's more subject oriented, um, you might want to choose one of these other databases. Academic Search Complete is just a standalone database. OneSearch searches multiple databases, the library catalog, the internet, certain certain resources that are available on the internet that are either free or um, available to us through um, agreements that we've made or decisions that we've made to include these um, resources in OneSearch. So OneSearch is always a good place um, to start. Academic Search Complete is just a smaller group of things. Academic Search Complete is included um, in OneSearch. So don't worry that if you choose OneSearch, it's not going to search any of these resources. I don't believe that it searches CQ Researcher. So you might, you would have to search that on your own. Also, there's a search box here for, for OneSearch. 
so you don't have to go back to the library's homepage or click on here. So there's multiple ways to get to, um, to OneSearch. There's also a link to um, Google Scholar, which is um, a, a Google version of academic materials. You can also search regular Google for information. Um, and we can try our regular search, the search that we did in OneSearch. And let's see what happens in Google. Now, so we have radio and television um, news um, websites because this is a very um, hot topic right now in Idaho. So you've got your, your Boise, especially the Boise newspapers, um, different, different things. You have, here's um, an article from the NRA. So you see what they have to say. We have other websites here. We've got um, the Giffords, organization. Gabby Giffords was a member of Congress who was shot at a campaign event. So she and her husband have started um, an organization. Um, we have different websites here, Boise State Public Radio, um, the National Conference of State Legislatures. Some of these are, are reputable sources and others are not. The Rand Corporation, just different things like this. So Education Week. When you're searching um, Google, you do need to be aware that you're going to run across extremely biased one way or the other sites, as well as some sites that are um, providing information in a just an informational way. So let's take a look at, oops, there we go. So we've got our locating material, evaluating material. Here on this, on this guide, there are three different um, methods for evaluating material. They all basically do the same thing. We have the CRAP test, we have radar, and we have score. And you'll notice the different types of, of materials that uh, or, or the rating um, information um, that that we have. So we have on most of them we have currency. How recent is the information? Can you tell on a website? Is there a date that tells you when that information was was created? Um, this can be important if the if the data was written 20 years ago and this is a current topic, the information may or may not really be relevant. Relevance is something that's more um, related to what your topic is and how well the information that is presented assists you in writing your paper or constructing, constructing your speech. The authority, who wrote this? Can you tell who wrote it on an organization webpage? Do they tell you who they are and what their um, purpose is for providing this information. This is what can tell you um, if a site is um, biased or not. Let's see if we can. Can't get to that tab again. We'll just do this all over again. So if we take a look at the Gifford site, you're always on a website looking for their about. 
tells it tells will tell you who they are and what their purpose is. So is it their mission? Their mission is to do this. They want to end the gun lobby stranglehold on the political system. Get to know us. So this this information, you take a look at this and you deter determine if this is a website that the information from is something that will benefit your argument. If it's not, then you wouldn't have to use it. But it, the, the about page will tell you um, who they are, what their purpose is, and how you would go about determining whether you wanted to use their information or not. Or, you know, in, in the case of an article, who is the author and what are their qualifications? So if we take a look at one of our articles here, let's see if this one has, so this one doesn't, doesn't have any information. Sometimes there will be information about an institution, an educational institution or research facility that the author is affiliated with. So you can, but usually with periodicals, that is not the case. Let's see if we can find an academic article. There we go. And this one does not either, but usually it'll, it'll be up here. So you can tell who, what their, what their affiliation is and, you know, are they writing on a topic that they have expertise in? Um, then you also, with, with the um, authority, you have the website domains. Um, uh, for a website, .coms, anybody can have a .com. Um, you might be a little suspicious of, of .com websites. I mean, your, your neighbor sitting next to you in class could have a .com website and be writing about this topic. Um, a .edu, .edus are um, restricted to um, institutions of higher education in the United States. So if you see a .edu, you know that it's someone from um, a university or a college, like isu.edu. Um, .gov is used, um, originally was used for um, departments of the US federal government, and now some states are allowed to use um, the .gov domain. So idaho.gov is the official website for the state of Idaho. Um, and then the different federal agencies will have um, a .gov um, website. .orgs has to be a, an actual organization. There's a process that, that they have to go through to, um, to be allowed a, a, a .org domain. So the Giffords.org is a little bit more reputable than if it were a.com. So the accuracy, hopefully you've read enough information, you've read your background information, you've read a number of articles, you know, every, you know, every, all of the articles that you read, um, you kind of have the same type of information you come across an article that has something totally different, um, that looks a little suspicious, you might want to to kind of figure to take a look at it a little more closely and figure out does the person that wrote this actually really know what they're talking about or are they trying to um, skew the whole topic um, one way or another? Do they have they written an article but there's no there are no sources um, in reading the article or the web page, there's no information that gives you an idea of where um, where this is coming from. 
So accuracy is one thing. And then we have purpose. Why are they writing this? Are they writing it to, to inform you? Or are they writing it to sell you something? Is it is it to entertain you? Or are they is it a biased site that's trying to persuade you to their particular point of view on whatever the topic is? Um, is the is the are the intentions clear? This can be um, again with the about um, page on a website or um, in the introduction of an article or of a book, um, giving you the information of what their purpose is in writing the um, the thing that you're reading, and then are there if you notice any biases um, or as the article, the point of view, um, objective or impartial. So these are things that you can consider when you're um, looking at the sources that you find, especially, especially, especially when you're looking at um, sources from the web. And any one of these, even though the words are different, they essentially mean the same thing. They're giving you the same thing. Who, you know, scope, who is the intended audience, currency, originality. Is it original research or are they just regurgitating something that somebody else did? Um, what is the reason and who the expertise? It's like I said, the same, same types of things. Um, some people don't like the crap test because of how you have to say it. Okay, and then sometimes what we want to take a look at um, might be statistics on our topic or polls. Now, polls, we have the Pew Research Center and the Roper Center, so you can take a look at those. Um, some of the big um, government websites, you've got the Census Bureau, um, Bureau of Justice Statistics, Uniform Crime Reports. Um, will have statistics. Um, another thing to think about um, is using Google. So if we were to do concealed carry and then do, let's see, how do we do this? Statistics. And plus, use the plus sign your topic and then so then we have sites that have statistics for concealed carry so if you need statistics for your um for your speech this is a good way to find them now if you want a government website that has statistics, you could add the word site, a colon, and then .gov. And this is going to give you government websites that have statistics about concealed carry. And notice it's striking out statistics. And it looks like this didn't work very well for this particular one, but we had some really good um, results with our with just the, the search that we did. So, we have our polls, and then we have a section on citations. So here we have links to your style guides. If you don't have one um, in, in hand, you haven't been required to purchase one. We do have um, the paper guides, the print guides here in the library. If you need further help with your research, make sure that you contact the library. 
we have many ways to contact us. When you first come on to the library's webpage, this little pop out will come up. Do you need help? Chat now. If the chat, if there's someone monitoring chat, they will get back to you right away. Um, chat is not available 24 hours. It's not available on the weekends. So you, you, if you need help, you need to contact the library um, in the middle of the day rather than at three o'clock in the morning. Um, but using these resource, the library resources, you can do your research whenever you want. If you are off campus, not in a campus in campus housing or in the library or one of the classroom buildings, um, you do need to um, authenticate yourself to the library's website. You do that using your ID number and your last name, and then you will have full access to anything that you would have um, as if you were on, on campus. Um, and other ways to contact the librarians, you can call the reference desk. You can come into the, actually come into the library um, and contact someone at the reference desk. The reference desk is open from nine to five, um, Monday through Thursday until, and it's not open on Fridays, but we are available on chat on Fridays. So you can, um, you can email, it's an individual librarian, or there is also an email um, reference service. So you email the reference department and they will get back to you. It's not as fast as chat, but if you're in, in the middle of the night doing your research, that would be the, um, the easiest way to get in touch with us. So remember, if you have questions or you need additional help, we're here at the library and we're available to help. I hope you have a good time finding research and information for your speeches and we'll hope to see you soon.